Today on this 2002 Jeep Liberty, we're going to install part number SM99251 from SMI. This is a stay and play duo supplemental braking system. Before we begin our install, we'll show you how this product works, already installed on this vehicle. Let's go ahead and take the toggle switch, put it on the on position, we'll press the brake pedal, and we should get an indication on our brake light. Next we'll go ahead and pull the pin for a breakaway switch. We'll verify operation that way, and our cylinder should move. Now I'll show you how it installs. Now the first step is go ahead and find a location for our operating unit. There's not much room inside here, but this location right here, in fact, this is what the manufacturer recommended. So it seems like that if we route the hoses down towards the firewall, and then nestle at an angle like this, we can go ahead and eventually zip tie to our line right here, and it'll sit right next to the connection point for the computer here, but not press down on. It will sit on this component down here, but it should be strong enough to carry it. Mounting this box is actually going to be one of our last things we do because we need to eventually make one more connection to it. Next we'll go ahead and mount our GeForce controller. This typically mounts in this location right here and this label has to face towards the passenger side. We're going to attach to the kick panel here using a couple of provided screws. In this case, you can't go all the way up because we we'll also need to take this panel off as well. So we'll bring it down just a little bit lower and we'll go ahead and mount it. that panel out of the way, see how much room we had to maneuver it. So I think we'll go ahead and line our box with this edge right here. Next we'll go ahead and work on our monitor light. We'll do a little pre-assembly before we put it into the vehicle. First off, we have this wire harness here. It's basically a loop. We're gonna cut this in half and then make our connection to the wire. Go ahead and leave these guys together for now. Now there's a special way we have to orient this connection here. This end will go to our indicator light or monitor light, and this end will eventually go to the cold side of our brake switch. All we gotta do on these two wires here is strip them back and then add the buck connectors. I'm using the small blue ones. Then we'll add our indicator light and it's gonna match up red to red and black to brown. These little ends here, just simply push into the buck connector, then crimp them down into place. We're gonna go ahead and add some electrical tape to it, just to help secure our connection. All right, one half's done. We'll go to the other half of the wire harness. Now on this side of the harness, our red wire is going to be extended with a gray wire. And this gray wire will eventually go to the cold side of the brake switch. And our brown wire will eventually be ran to the black wire on our G-Force controller. We'll just leave this one alone for now. Since this half of the wire harness will be removable, we'll go ahead and use the included loom material to contain the wires. We got our harness made. Let's go ahead and disconnect it. Our monitor light we'll install in a little bit later. So we'll set that to the side. And let's go ahead and connect this in, which will be a permanent install, onto the vehicle. Now our brown wire needs to be connected to the black wire here. What we're gonna use is a quick splice connector. Now this doesn't come with the kit. Now the part number we're using is 564. But basically you slip it over the wire you wanna use and then slip the wire that you're gonna to add to it, and then go ahead and squeeze on the metal connector here with some pliers, and it'll complete the circuit between the two. Next, we'll go ahead and take a gray wire and attach it to the cold side of the brake switch. Now, we was able to go ahead and loosen ours up. We got our switch back down. You just basically rotate it, and it comes straight out. Now, you have to crawl up in there pretty far to get to it. Also, there's a clip on the wires up higher that you can loosen up, and you can actually get some more slack out of it that way, too. We pulled ours down just so you can see what's going on. And our brake wire is typically going to be the white with the tan stripe. We'll go ahead and put a wire tap onto it. This comes with the kit. Let's line up the groove, bring the metal half to it. 
and then we'll go ahead and finish it off with some pliers until it clicks. To our gray wire, we're gonna add this bag connector. This will plug into our wire tap. And then we'll go ahead and put our switch back into place. Now this is the location where we're gonna come through the firewall. There's a little piece of insulation that you have to remove right here. It's about in the shape of a key. As you remove that, there's another piece of foam, and then there's a hard plastic that you can see on the outside behind the brake booster. It's a good idea to drill a small pilot hole out first, and then we'll go ahead and make it to our final hole size. We can make it big enough where we can install our wires as well as a piece of airline tubing. Around 5 eighths of an inch should be good enough. And we definitely want a really small drill or a right angle drill. Now, using a step drill bit and a right angle drill works best in this application. We'll continue working with the wires from the G-Force controller. All these wires from the controller need to go outside through the hole we just drilled through. So to do that, we're going to actually combine this with the airline tubing that comes with the kit. Because eventually this airline tubing is going to be rammed back inside anyway. So we'll use this to pull our wires from the inside to the outside. Let's go ahead and push it through and get it started. Then we'll go ahead and pull out the rest from the outside. We'll go ahead and disconnect the wires and we'll pull out the rest. Make sure you got plenty of length inside there in case you have to move some wires around. Also, we'll go ahead and take up the slack for our airline tubing. We'll pull the vast majority of that through. We'll make sure we have enough of our line that'll go over to our operating unit. So we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and take a moment now and we'll go ahead and bundle our wires. First, our in for a monitor light. Let's go ahead and put this in a location where it's easy to get to. In this case, I think right here in this corner will be our best bet. I think we can simply just tuck it behind the plastic here. And I think we're good to go. Then let's take a moment to bundle up the rest of our wires and that'll be it for the wiring on the inside of the vehicle. Let's go ahead and work with our airline tubing that will go to our cylinder. We're going to go ahead and connect this end to our operating unit. Before we do that, we'll go ahead and put a fresh end on there using a tubing cutter. Now the tubing cutter we're using is part number F9009. And then we'll install it into the back of the operating unit. Push it in until it stops and then push it in again and you're good to go. Now we can go ahead and put our operating unit in for good. Let's go ahead and route our lines to where we want them. When our unit's in place. All right, we'll push it down into place, make sure it's next to the connectors. And I'm just gonna zip tie to this line right here. Don't need to crush anything, just enough to keep it secure. Take a moment and push your excess tubing back to the interior. We can always cut off our excess there. Now we'll go ahead and work for our other end of our airline tubing, which will go to our actuator. We'll go back underneath the dash, and here's our actuator. We're gonna mount this to our brake pedal arm right here. This piece will clamp it into place. We wanna make sure that the cable end is going towards the firewall, and we're just gonna loosely install it for now, just enough where it holds its place, and that's it. all the nuts. All right, just tightening this down or just hold the shape but we can still move it. Now we want this cable to go in pretty much a straight line back towards the firewall. Line it up, push the brake pedal a couple of times and see how the cylinder will move. So you'll have it start off at a little bit of an off angle but then as it pulls it'll go straight. So that's what you want to aim for. Then go ahead and make a mark on the insulation here and we'll cut it out until we get down to some sheet metal. We'll take out a nice chunk of it so we have plenty of room to work with. Sharp utility knife will work to cut the insulation. Now we'll work with our cable clamp. We need to shorten up our cable where it takes up just enough of the slack. And anything after that we can adjust with our air cylinder. Basically, we have it going through the set screw uh, a couple of times. 
Now we didn't have it tightened down, but we just wrapped it around twice and pushed up to the firewall so we have a good idea of our length. Now we'll just go ahead and tighten it down. Let's go ahead and tighten down our clamp. And we'll go ahead and attach it to the wall. Now just like before, I'm gonna hold the bracket up to the wall and I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark and then I'll drill my hole. Now this is a fastener that we're using. It comes with the kit and it uses a 3 8 nut driver to attach it. And we're gonna use that to make our pilot hole first. Then we'll go ahead and put on our bracket. Where you go all the way through, it's a good idea to take a look on the other side to make sure it's not gonna hit anything you don't want to. Once you're satisfied with the placement, we'll go ahead and put it in for good. Now at this point, we can make final adjustments. We can go ahead and rotate it up and down as needed and pull it from front to rear as needed as well. You wanna to try to maintain about two inch uh, clearance between the pedal and the bracket here as well. Once you're satisfied with the placement, we'll go ahead and tighten down these nuts. Now when we tighten this down, we want a gentle bow on this piece here and that'll be good enough. Again, it's one of those things that you want tension, but you don't want to crush it. Let's go ahead and connect your airline tubing to it. Leave some excess because this cylinder will move around a little bit as it works. We'll go ahead and cut the length. Now, at this point, you have to make a decision. That panel that was up on the bottom here, this line has to go through it. So you have to modify it to make waves so that the whole assembly can work. What I suggest is actually leaving it off so you don't have to worry about this interacting with that hush cover or getting caught up or anything like that when you don't need it to. So in our case, we're going to leave ours off. Go ahead and put our carpeting back up into place. A little tip to hold it down and just use a couple of clamps to give it some weight. And the gas pedal to help hold it out of the way as well. Next, we're moving on to the breakaway switch. Now, depending on the vehicle, we'll decide where you can locate this. Yeah, traditionally you want to be as close to the center as possible. However, the way the vehicle is constructed, it really doesn't have anything for us to attach to. Now it's supposed to attach to the base plate. You can attach to the plastic, but eventually that'll wear down. So we'll go ahead and take ours and put it in this location here. This way we have plenty of room for our hooks and room for our tow bar as well. Now we already have a pilot hole drilled out so you can see where the material we're drilling into is. We're also gonna modify our switch by drilling another quarter inch hole a little bit further up so we can have this as recessed as far as possible. We add our second hole to our switch and then since we have limited access to get hardware installed, we're gonna be using a self-tapping screw. Now the screw we're using the same thing we attached our actuator bracket to the firewall on the inside. Now this does not come with a kit, but it's a number 14 size self-tapping screw that uses a 3 8 nut driver. With a breakaway switch secured, we'll go ahead and take these two wires from the switch and we'll route them up towards the top. To do that, we're going to use an old piece of airline tubing that we can tape to it and pull it back up. This also could be a piece of wire that can hold its shape and you can route it up with that as well. Alright, now we'll go ahead and add some loom material to our two wires from breakaway switch. Now this doesn't come with the kit, we're using part number 7509-10. Let's go ahead and run that up towards the engine compartment. Let's do the rest of our electrical connections now. Starting with our wires from our operating unit, we're going to go ahead and add some more loom material to this to help keep them contained. We'll be using part number 459075-1. We'll take our wires, we'll go ahead and route them across back to the firewall and up to our fuse box right here. First thing we need to do is go ahead and Attach this to our power supply. This is our fuse holder. Make sure your fuse is out. We'll go ahead and cut the loop in half and add a ring terminal to one end. And the other end, we'll get a buck connector. Now this is a thick piece of wire here. I'm actually gonna substitute the ring terminal and the buck connector that comes with the kit with something a little bit larger. Basically buck connectors and ring terminal for 10 gauge wire. Let's go ahead and attach a ring terminal to our power supply, which will be underneath our fuse panel right here, and we'll connect to one of these bolts. 
We'll double check ourselves, take our tester, ground to the battery, and check the post. And we're doing this with the key out of the ignition, so we know we have constant power. We'll go ahead and put our cover back into place, and we'll go ahead and start making our connections starting from here. All right, let's go ahead and get our wires ready from our breakaway switch. One wire from the breakaway switch, doesn't matter which one, will get connected here. And also, our brown wire will also get connected here as well. So we'll combine these two. And this is why we use the oversized buck connector, make a junction out of it. Now, other black wire from the breakaway switch will go to blue. We can use a normal buck connector that comes with the kit. All right, now breakaway switch is hooked up. We're done with that one. Then our last two wires are gonna match up color for color to the wires coming from the G-Force controller. So I'm gonna take a moment and add some more loom material to this as well. Again, we're using the same 5 8 diameter material like we did on the other wires. Let's go ahead and even up our wires. Go ahead and strip them back. Cut off any excess. And use a couple of the blue buck connectors that come with the kit. Now these three wires get connected to the aftermarket wiring harness that was previously installed in this vehicle. So we'll go ahead and attach our wires to that. We'll go ahead and separate our wires. We'll make big loops that are easy to work with. And we'll use our quick splice connectors that come with the kit to make our connections. First off, yellow to yellow. Take a quick splice connector, put it where we want it. Next up, green. A brown wire we don't have to worry about. And our white wire is our ground. We'll connect our two white wires together. In this instance, I'm gonna leave a tail hanging out because I'm gonna run this directly to the body as well. Now, there's a little stop in the quick splice connectors here, so if you, just, you may have to clear that a little bit to run the wire all the way through, then put it back together. There's not really much to it. A pair of needle nose will grab it and pull out the remnants. Try to put it in a line with those guys. In this tail, we're going to go directly to ground on the sheet metal right there. And we'll use a ring terminal that comes with the kit. And we'll use a self-tapping screw to attach it to the sheet metal. Okay, now the, the self-tapping screw does not come with the kit. We're using a number 10 screw that uses a 5 16 nut driver. Drill it out first, then attach our ground. I think with that, all our electrical connections are made. Let's go ahead and add our fuse to fuse holder. We'll go ahead and tape up our electrical connections with the buck connectors. Then we'll zip tie our wires. We're going ahead and make our connections to the vacuum line now. We'll install a check valve right here, the black end going towards the motor, and then we'll install a T right next to it. We'll make a couple of cuts in the factory line to install these. 
go ahead and cut our section out. And we'll go ahead and put our valve into our cut piece line, and then our key. And then we'll go ahead and just put these pieces back together. Now we'll go ahead and take our vacuum line from our operating unit and we'll go ahead and shorten it up to what we need and we'll go ahead and add it to our T. Our connections are made for vacuum line. We'll go ahead and secure our vacuum hose. Aside from our indicator light, everything is hooked up. So let's go ahead and hook up our indicator light and we can go ahead and test it out. Now, our indicator light can be permanently mounted with the adhesive on the back, or it also comes with uh, hook and loop fasteners, so you can put it somewhere on the vehicle while you're towing it and then take it down when you're not using it. In this case, we're going to let the customer decide the location of where to attach it. But for now, we'll leave ours right here. For an example, a lot of time you'll find this attached to the front side of a mirror. Next, we'll go ahead and pull the pin for a breakaway switch. We'll verify operation that way, and our cylinder should move. Let it sit for about 10 seconds, then we'll inspect the cylinder afterwards to make sure it's sitting correctly. If everything testing out okay by itself, the next step is to go ahead and hook up to the RV and go ahead and test drive it and adjust it the way you want it to. That, they'll finish it for a reinstall, the part number SM99251 from SMI, the stay and play duo supplemental braking system on our 2002 Jeep Liberty.